Hello everyone and welcome back to another snail mail episode and yes it has been a little while since we've had a snail mail episode and as you guys know from the community updates we did have a few deaths in the family over the last week and um it's just been a bit of a roller coaster ride and so that's why we didn't have snail mail last week is I didn't want to like be crying when I opened these things because these are beautiful wonderful gifts that you guys have sent me from around the world we have a package from Australia hiding down at the bottom here today and I happen to know who that's from too so I'm very excited to get to that but yeah I didn't want to be like super sad <laughs> when I went through all of the things that make me so happy and joyful which is your wonderful letters and just the fantastic drawings, just the inspiration, the kindness that you guys send my way through our wonderful snail mail. And so that's why we didn't have one last week. And don't worry, everything's going pretty well. Keep your eyes out for the community update just to see how things are going uh, otherwise. But yeah, we're going to open up some mail because we have a lot to go through. So if I move a little bit quickly today, like I say every time, it's because we have so much to cover and I want to make sure I get to all of it. And then also I want to let you guys know if you are an international viewer and you want to send something in, you probably want to hold on to it now because we are approaching the middle of June and that means by the time your item arrives it may not get here before the end of June it may not even get here before the end of July depending on how long customs decides to hold it and that means that I wouldn't get it so don't send it yet if you're international don't send it if you're domestic and a little bit worried then you might want to send something soon or just wait because don't worry I'll open up a new PO box and this time when we open up our new PO box I don't have to change it again for at least six years so I'm very excited about that. So yes, we are moving in August. As you guys know, we should be moved into our new place by August 1st or 2nd. And then as soon as I can after that, as soon as we get all the paperwork together so that I am allowed to open up the P.O. box, I will be opening up the P.O. box in Michigan. And this one will close here in North Carolina either at the end of June or I'm going to see if they'll let me add in one more month so the end of July. And so yeah, that's coming up. Just remember that. So if you're trying to send something in, and you're like in the United States you might want to do it pretty soon and if you're outside of the United States you might want to wait a little bit and no pressure it'll come back so you guys can just hold on to it it'll be fine and just to let you guys know for all of the stuff for snail mail like adding in trees and things like that I've just been a little bit thrown by the things that have gone on so hang in there and we should have all of that coming back soon too all right so without further ado we're gonna go ahead and dive into this because we have a lot to cover and i want to make sure that i get to all of your guys amazing things and that includes two piles of letters from two very specific people lizzie right here and then atlee over here sent multiple letters i don't even know what order they were supposed to show up in either so it's going to be kind of fun opening them up and seeing like what what's inside and like which one was supposed to come first kind of like putting a puzzle together so they, these are all from Lizzie in New York and let's see five yeah there's five all together so I'm gonna go ahead and just start opening them I'm gonna open all of them and then I'll like line them up and we'll see what's inside but it's so much fun Lizzie I think you have been leaving comments recently asking when the snail mail is going to show up so let me make sure I get everything out of that one and we're just gonna go ahead and gently open them up and see what's hiding inside but yeah, I'm super excited for the move, you guys. Chips and I have been talking about it, and every time I... Ooh, there's flowers. I'm seeing flowers. <laughs> and every time I think about it, I'm just so excited because snail mail is a huge part of how I'm going to be decorating my new office. I'm going to be making sure... Oh my gosh, these are... It's getting colorful in here, you guys. It's getting colorful. Oh my goodness, what is going on? This is exciting. But it is going to be um, totally decorated with snail mail. I'm going to have fan up, up on the walls. I will probably rotate it out pretty often too. I'm going to buy lots of frames to be able to frame some of the fan art and be able to just kind of like rotate what you'll see behind me. Uh, the birds are going to get hopefully a new bigger flight cage that they can enjoy. The geckos are going to get new tanks and they're, I'm hoping to get a little waterfall set up in the gecko tank too. All right, so I've opened everything and I kind of put it in the order of how we opened it and let's see what Lizzie has to say. So I think this one came first, so I'm going to open it up. It looks like a big beautiful letter and 
Oh, Luna! Luna and a stranger wolf. So Luna chasing away a stranger wolf. Man, does that make me happy that we have started Summer of the Wolves again because the Wolf Quest is back. I'm hoping to keep it back. Uh, you guys have been so positive and great in Wolf Quest, so I'm really hoping to keep it back for now on because it's such a huge part of our channel now, which really surprised me. I did not plan on that. That's totally how the community drives everything. All right, so from Lizzie. Dear Siri, I am writing this in, on a half hour car drive to a play. So, it might be a little messy. I love your videos. I love how you always inspire, make heartfelt speeches, and spread joy all around. Oh gosh, in the world. Oh gosh. <laughs> and I'm just trying to be me, which is like why it's so humbling when people say these things. I feel a little sad about a rabbit I saw today. Oh my gosh, I just saw a flock of turkey. Turkey, uh, turkey vultures. I didn't know they lived here. Anyway, Pip, my corgi, and I were in the backyard and there was a rabbit. It was eating my forget-me-nots. Pip kept looking at me in the back of the rabbit. I knew he was asking me if he could chase it. I hoped that he wouldn't hurt it. Just chase it. I pointed at it and Pip, oh, I just saw something horrible. There was a dead doe on the road. <laughs> that just makes my day even worse. Back to the topic. Pip went running after it. Despite his age, he was fast. The, ra the rabbit ran away and was never to be seen again. Love Lizzie. P.S. I hope you thought the story was entertaining. Pip is 12 years old. That's adorable. And yes, it is sad when you see the, the deer that kind of get hit by cars on the side of the road. But at least you know that hopefully there'll be scavengers that can come by and kind of continue the cycle of life that way. And that's kind of adorable. I don't know why, but I have a soft spot for kind of those like uh, what do you call it? Like in the moment, the flow of the moment sort of letters that you guys send in when you're like, I'm sitting in my kitchen while my mom's cooking dinner while the rain falls down. It's just so fun to be able to picture like where you are in the world. You guys see my vlogs. You know where I'm at. You know it's a sunny day. You know my birds are here. I've got meerkats on my desktop. You know what I'm wearing today. And so you you know a lot about me. So when you send in letters like that, that tell just like little pieces, a little insight into your life, it's really fun for me. Oh, oh it's a good Oh, I'll have to show that to my dad. Chameleons are one of his favorite things ever. Oh, that's so cool. Dear Siri, it is my birthday very soon. My birthday is May 29th. Oh, happy late birthday! I understand if you can't send anything back to me, but it would just be a great present for you to read this letter. My mom is the nurse of my school. When she was a lot younger, she used to go to Salter Path Family Campground in North Carolina. I really don't have much more to say, so love Lizzie. Oh, Lizzie, that's adorable. And then she has sent in, I think, some little books that she has made. So this one... It looks like dirt on the back. That's really fun, actually. Dear Siri, I love your videos, and because of that, I have a lot of questions. Is your real name Siri? Nope, my real name is not Siri. It's very close to my real name, but it's not my real name. What part of Michigan are you moving to? I actually don't know like where the city I'm moving to is located in relation to Michigan. It's in the mitt, I think. Like, the mitt is part of Michigan, isn't it? Like, <laughs> I need to definitely brush up on my geography for where we're moving. I'm wanting to say, like, kind of in the center of Michigan. We're about an hour out of Detroit to the west. Um, and I have no idea where that is, so I'm going to have to look it up. But, yeah, we're moving somewhere in Michigan. How are you going to transport your birds? Now, I put my birds in a little travel cage. Uh, I might even blog that so you guys can see the process, but there's a small cage that I have for them. So they go inside the temporary travel cage with fresh food, water, and spray millet, which is really good to help them handle like the shock. When a bird is really having a hard time transitioning, they'll definitely eat spray millet even if they won't eat anything else. And then, um, then you just put them in the tiny cage, put them in the car, cover them with a blanket, make sure it doesn't get too hot or too cold, make sure that they have fresh water access to it all the time, and you just drive on to wherever you're going. And then why do giraffes have spots? I have no idea. I'm going to have to, to learn why giraffes have spots. Um, did you do? What was your first job? Uh, honestly, working for my family. My family has always run businesses. Um, yeah, like my grandparents ran a business, so I remember being like six and helping them to fold pamphlets to put in for the woodcrafts that they would sell. And then my parents ran a scrapbook store, so you know, by the time you're 11, then all of after school time is like help, trying to help them or getting in the way while they're trying to run the store. Uh, and then let's see what was my first proper job I worked at my friend my mom's friend's scrapbook stores for a while I worked at a natural health food store I worked at Walmart I kind of like worked my way up into different things more like into different areas of retail after that but I started basically as early as I can remember working for my family there's always been like family work to do 
So that's, for, that's I actually, I'm really grateful for that in hindsight. Uh, when what, did you work as a biologist and where? And the closest I've ever come to working as a proper biologist is when I was an environmental educator in Kansas City for a nonprofit there. And it was one of the best things, the best job of my life other than being a YouTuber was working there. And it was fantastic because I would teach hundreds of students every day I would go in. I got to the point where I started off super shy and I was like, <gasps> Oh my gosh, there's like 20 kids and I'm in charge of them all day and what do I do? I have to teach them about cave sciences and I was in charge of the cave area and the thing is our our agency, like our, our area was inside of a limestone cave, like the actual place was inside of a limestone cave. You would drive into it and then you would be inside of a cave. And then I taught cave ecology inside of a fake cave, inside of a real cave. And it was really fun. We even had the slide. You could kind of like jump and slide into the cave or you could walk the normal way. And so to really get the kids on my side every time, I would jump into the slide instead of walking around like all the other adults. And they really thought that was really cool because they could follow me in through the slide. So that was my, my other favorite job in the world. It's right up there, right tucked next to being a YouTuber. So that was really fantastic. Uh, what gave you the idea to go to Bald Head Island? And that is Chips. Chips came up with it because I told him how I really wanted to be able to go and see the North Carolina coast before we moved. He got a few suggestions and ideas of where to go. He put it all together. He made it all come together and it was a amazing life experience it was it was absolutely amazing and that he put so much effort into it partially because he also wanted to see the beaches and he wanted to go to a nice not busy beach he wanted a very naturalistic setting too but partially knowing that he did it for me is still oh, it takes my breath away it's it's amazing what is your favorite sport i actually really love tennis <laughs> I've never played, well I think badminton is more what I'm thinking of. I have never played a sport uh, in my entire life, but I love hitting like rackets and balls together. So I'm hoping maybe I can get into racquetball after we move, um, but I'd be very careful about it because Chips loves racquetball, but he's not played since he almost had his eye taken out by like one of his friends when they were playing racquetball really hard and then like it almost hit him in the eye and left like a huge gash. So I don't want to lose my eye, <laughs> but I would love to do racquetball, um, maybe swimming. There's a lot of things. I really want to try to get into a few of the sports. Uh, I love hiking. Does that count? Um, when we move up into Michigan. So that's definitely going to happen. Okay, I got to keep going. All right. Do you ever think that the people that say such a nice thing in the comments are doing it just to be nice? Well, it's all true. You're such a big inspiration on the entire community. I don't know if you've ever heard of this, but when we were going to Wegmans, I was so fascinated by a mallard that was cleaning its feathers. All because of your joy and happiness over animals. I was so happy over that duck. Love, Lizzie. Oh, Lizzie, thank you. <laughs> and yeah, I get that a lot where people will be like, why are you so excited about a squirrel? And I'm like, how can I not be excited about a squirrel? And then to their surprise, the more excited I am about that squirrel, the more excited they get about that squirrel and then it's just spreading joy and happiness all over the place and that's something that I found to be one of the biggest truths of my life through all almost 30 years I've been around is when you really focus on trying to cultivate joy and creativity it's a positive feedback it's just going to continue to spread out from where you start really trying to make it grow so it's definitely worth doing even if you feel really self-conscious about being excited about something no one else is excited about just go for it just go for it it's pretty amazing what happens oh zoo does see a zoo and noodle doodles is chasing down a little mouse oh that's so cute thank you lizzie i miss noodle doodles we'll have to go spend some time with him oh and something's popping out oh it's a butterfly lizzie you're spoiling me look at all of this what a beautiful butterfly! I love that color of, of pink red, like grapefruit, I think is what they call it. That's actually my favorite color right now and I have no idea why. Alright, here's another beautiful letter from Lizzie, handmade. I really appreciate the, the thoughtfulness behind that. Dear Siri, I know you love greenery and you eat vegan things. Well, I'm just sitting here doing nothing at all. This poem is hard to write and this flower only blooms at night. What is it, Siri? I'm very curious. Love, Lizzie. Um, a flower that only blooms at night, maybe a moonflower? I think I have some of those planted on the deck, but they didn't really take off this year. Oh, I'll have to look that up. Let's see. It's a corgi! Oh my gosh! Lizzie! Look! It's four-leaf clovers! You guys, that's so cool! 
Dear Siri, my friend Lexi and I love your warrior series. Our favorite cat from it is Night Frost. We love that she only hunts at night. Also, she has secrets about Bear Glow and how he's not uh, supposed to have kits. Sorry, Lexi and I got uh, paint all over this letter. The dog on this letter is a corgi. My dog is a corgi too, and his name is Pip. I hope you liked our artwork. Love, Lizzie. P.S. The big painting was made by both of us. The four leaf clovers. Oh my goodness. Oh, there's a little puppy on the back there too. Oh, that's so cool. Dear Siri, could you plant, uh, let's see, an intertwined starfruit tree for my friend Lizzie and I? Please name it Liz Lexi and Lizzie's starfruit tree. We would really appreciate it. Thank you. Your number one fan, Le uh, Lexi. Oh, Lexi, that's so fun. So she has drawn a starfruit tree too. I cannot believe this is more four leaf clovers than I have seen in one place ever in my life. You ladies are extremely lucky. And then I have this one that was given to me as a gift too. So I have five four leaf clovers now. That is like a record. I have to have some really good luck. This is amazing. Thank you so much, Lizzie and Lexi. And then finally, we've got this from Lizzie. And oh, it's the painting they were talking about. Oh, you guys, look at that underwater ocean scene oh that's beautiful thank you so much you two i hope you're having a wonderful day i hope pip is doing well as well and thank you guys so much oh my gosh that's really fun all right i told myself i would keep a good pace so i'm gonna keep moving now this one is from utah so let's go ahead and let's see what this letter from utah has to say i have a lot of family out in utah actually a ton of family out there um, let's see. Ooh, ooh, what are we looking at here? <gasps> you guys, look. Look how pretty. No way, is that Honey Wish? Honey Wish, I asked my sister to draw this because I'm a klutz when it comes to art. Angeline, oh my gosh, Angeline. Oh my gosh, thank you. This is beautiful. Dear Siri, you are an inspiration to me. You plow through everyday challenges to give us videos. We really appreciate it. I love watching your videos and I'm glad that you make them. I was so excited when you announced that you were doing a Warrior Cat series. When I finished the books, I did not know what I was going to do, but now I'm enveloped in the interactions of the story. Someone should write down a story and send it to Aaron Hunter so we can get it published. Love, Benice. I hope I pronounced your name correctly. I apologize if I didn't. P.S. I'm for Shadow the Warrior Cat. P.S. Uh, P.P.S. Don't worry if you can't pronounce my name thank you not many people can <laughs> oh thank you so much and this is beautiful this is beautiful this makes me know why honey wish is such a deeply beloved favorite i have some very special plans in mind for her but i'm gonna have to be very careful not to let them slip and spoil everything oh thank you so much both of you that's beautiful i can't wait to put that in my scrapbook so i can like admire honey wish's glory this one does not help oh, here we go buffy so this one's from buffy all right i'm gonna carefully crack this puppy open it's very thick envelope so mm, let's see and sorry about the baby <laughs> And the woodpecker. <laughs> the baby and the woodpecker. Uh, all the birds are being a little bit rambunctious, so they must be happy about this letter. All right, so there's quite a bit in it. Let's go ahead and crack it open. <gasps> there's pictures! You guys, there's pictures! Okay. Oh, Buffy! Buffy, I think, was it these gems? I'm trying to remember which gems. It may have been real gems and not these gems. So it says, Dear Siri, you may remember me. My name is Buffy and I gave you the gems. I wanted to write you again to tell you I might be rescuing a dog from a great shelter where I live. They rescue all kinds of animals, mainly cats and dogs. I also like to rescue animals in my own backyard. My family and I are taking care of feral cats in our neighborhood. We currently have 10. Here are their names. Snickers, Cheerios, Captain Crunch, Lick s'mores, pudding, pickles, minty, pocky, and eggplant. Those are adorable names. I actually know a cat whose nickname is Pocky. That's adorable. Last summer, some of the cats had kittens, nine of them to be, a fa to, to be exact. We found them all home, or name, homes but one, which we kept. He is the cutest, and he is now eight months old. I named him Pew Pewdie Pie, yes, after the YouTuber. Thank you so much for reading my letter and putting gems in the title of the last video. It made me feel special. Th from Buffy. P.S. Um, <laughs> call newcomers Pixlers. Pixlers! That's a good way to say it. Oh my gosh, Buffy! And you've done so much art on the back. Look at that! Look at our little safari zone set up there. Oh, that's what I needed to get back in the flow for zoo crafting. Look at that. And there's Bear Glow, Honey Wish, Rose Stone from our Star Stable series. Uh, you know, really a huge part of getting 
so much love in my heart and so attached to so many of the series we do like star stable is your guys responses is the excitement is seeing how just happy you are to see so many different things it really really helps oh and we've got some questions what is your favorite cat? Mine's Crowfeather. And in my cats, I actually really love Silverfang. Mostly if I clearly like as well, but I don't like her um, in the way that I like Silverfang. I really like him. I really like Dawnstep because she's more challenging as a character. And I really like, I like Honeywish even though a lot of people try to like force who she is in the comments. So I have to kind of like pull her real character back now and then be like, no, this is the real cat. This is the real cat. Not, not all of that. This is the real cat. So I feel, I like her. I like Lizard Paw because there's a lot of stuff about him. Um, well, I can't say anymore because I don't want to spoil it for you guys, but he represents something special that a few of you have emailed me about cluing in on. And so I'm trying to include him and his unique nature for a very specific reason representing diversity. So we'll talk about that in the future. I can't give anything else away. All right. Do you think there will be a battle with Bear Glow? Who knows? Who knows? Name all of your pets. <laughs> I have, but I have a dog named uh, Chloe. And so I have Blueberry, Strawberry, Persimmon, Pumpkin, Aussie Eye, Aussie Eye Junior, Starburst. Did I say Loganberry? I think I said Loganberry. I've got the new little baby. Um, let's see. And then I've also got uh, Mellow, Maya, and Midna, my three crested geckos. And I think I named all of the birds. It's hard when the berry names start flying around. I'll have to do another updated pet vlog pretty soon. What's your favorite animals? Mine's a hyena. Giraffes. <laughs> birds by far. And then giraffes for sure. Oh, it's Disco Zoo. Oh, that's so fun. We don't get much Disco Zoo fan art. That is so exciting. I love Disco Zoo. And then we have Nightlight. And he has a new mate and a new mystery pup set. And I really hope you guys are enjoying the Summer of the Wolves. It's been good to bring it back. And then let me go ahead and tuck these over here. And then there's pictures. There's pictures with the baby kitten right there. Oh my gosh, look at that little face. Look how tiny, you guys. Look at these kittens. Oh, they were so cute. Look at them. Oh my gosh, they're just so adorable. Look at all of these little guys. Ah, and then what's this one? Oh, the feral outdoor cats. So these are the cats that they take care of who live outside. There we go. Wow, they're getting the good stuff too. That looks like wet food. Oh, they're really well taken care of. Oh my gosh. So here's Cutie Pie. <laughs> the adorable little kitten. That's so fun. Oh my gosh, thank you so much, Buffy. I'm so glad you're excited that I was so excited about the gems. All right, I'm gonna see if I can continue to move it. We might have to split. In fact, I think we will have to split this into two parts, but we're getting through the snail mail again and I'm really feeling, I think you guys can tell a lot better. So thank you so much for all of this. Oops, interlude. All right, and we're good to go again. So this one's from Danielle and from Wisconsin, I think, and I'm feeling a suspicious card shape to this envelope. So I'm very confident at what's probably inside here, but I might be surprised. And if not, I am reminded that I did have plans. I'm not gonna look down just yet. I did have plans for a certain something coming out this summer. I have no idea if I'm gonna be able to achieve it or not. And let's take a peek. Oh, no. <laughs> Oh my gosh, <laughs> there's a whole stack of cards. Okay, I gotta read the note first. All right, so let's open this up and see what it has to say. Dear Siri, I love your videos. Pixelmon Ranger, Zoocraft, Minecraft Animal Rescue, Zoo Tycoon, Wolf Quest, and Warrior Cats. I even have a cat of my own. Sometimes I imagine him as a warrior cat. I also got warrior cat books. I made you some pictures. I hope you like them and also give you an idea for one of your episodes. I've got you some warrior cat's name if you don't mind. Uh, um, from one of your fans, Danielle. P.S. The I like the names Angel Sight. Uh, Autumn Light, and my personal favorite, the Autumn Light's really fun, I like it because it kind of rhymes with Angel Sight, that's fun. Um, and my personal favorite that you might like, Rose Leaf. 
Oh, that's a good one. Idea for Warrior Cats and Moss Clan. Fairy Glow is a type of flower that can cure any poison with one of its petals. It can sleep during winter until spring. Ooh, that might be a fun thing. I, there's a few plants I need to come up with very special things in in our Sims 3 Warrior Cats challenge. So that is very exciting. Those are beautiful names, Danielle. I'll add them to my big list of names. Hundreds of cat names, but you guys have done so much. Oh, there's a Neckens and a Meow. They're a Charmander. Vulpix. Vulpix was like one of my all-time favorites when I was growing up. Her episode, like one of the first Vulpix episodes in the original Pokemon anime, it was one of my favorites. Goldeen is in here. Piplup. Piplup. Oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. There's Pikachu, Machop, Whisper. See, Whisper is one of the ones I'm not familiar with because that's like later series. But <laughs> every time I'm just going to gather up all the Pokemon cards you guys have sent in and like sit down and look at them to be inspired. That'd be really fun to like put them in a big pile and mix them up and pull one up to get an episode idea. That would be pretty fun actually. And oh, okay. I probably shouldn't say this because I'm going to get you guys kind of excited, but I have been thinking about the Pokemon um, morphs or the Pokemon like uh, species variety that you can kind of see like fan art of pretty often, like different Bulbasaurs with different flowers blooming out of their back as they turn into Venusaur. Those kinds of things make me really excited and inspire me a lot for stories. So I'm not going to say any more, but I'm kind of, I've been thinking a lot about that lately just to let you guys know. All right. And then we've got some beautiful pictures. Oh, look at Pokemon. Oh, wow. That is gorgeous. Look at that coloring and that shading. Oh my gosh, Danielle. This is amazing. Let's see what else she has sent in. So there's Pokemon. I think we have a hardcore Pokemon. Oh, Panda. Hardcore Pokemon and Panda fan. I know who I'm going to show this to. So this will be one that I show off to Chips in just a little bit. I think he's going to enjoy that quite a bit. And then let's see. Oh, Warrior Cat. Oh, there's a whole list of names over here. <gasps> Whoa. Nice. Nice. Look at all these ones. Hmm. You know, the Warrior Cats random generator I use, I feel is a little bit short-sighted. It only, it doesn't seem to have as many names as I want to use. So I wonder if I should make a new Warrior Cats generator. I'm pretty sure I could ask for some help at making it because it's a very simple thing. So I think I might take these and take your guys' name suggestions and start making a new Warrior Cats name generator because that would be really fun. All right, and then we've got one more piece right here. And let's see what Danielle has made for us. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Look at this, you guys! Isn't that beautiful? Oh my gosh! Come and your questions will be answered. Everything is not what it seems to be. And that's Star Clan with the meteor. And look at that. Oak Paw, Lizard Paw, Stone Paw, Wild Paw, Moon Paw. Oh my gosh, that was what the plan was. That was what the plan was until the events of this week in our Warrior Cat series. This is beautiful. Thank you so much, Danielle. You are an amazing artist. Oh my goodness gracious. Okay, that's awesome. Oh my gosh. All right, so I think we're going to wrap up with this one for today. And then we, I promise, and I know you're waiting on this, Reese. I know you're waiting. I promise we will open these tomorrow so that we'll have it all nicely wrapped up in a beautiful snail mail package. And this one is from Abigail. So let's go ahead and crack open our last letter for now from Abigail. And then Abigail from Stardew Valley. I love Stardew Valley so much. All right, and then let's see what we've got inside. And just gently, it's like a homemade envelope. That's really cool. All right, we've got some little notes. I see dear Siri. I see my name. Okay, got it. Uh, there we go, almost there. All right, dear Siri. Hey Siri, I'm a girl with big dreams and house chips. And I'm watching a snail mail. I just turned this, uh, I just turned nine this par past three to four weeks ago. And I have one dog, a fish, and two cats. A million times, uh, let's see, question a million times. Original character or Marnie, huh? Huh, I'm not sure quite what that means, my dear. Oh, movie, hmm, hmm. And then, let's see, Batman or Superman? Batman because he's a good dad. <laughs> Batman because I love Batman a lot. I love the idea of Batman. I love the arcs that they normally get into. I love the intelligence. I love 
Mm, I particularly love Batman's character in Justice League Unlimited and what a good father he is and the way that he really takes Superman to task for being a good father. Uh, ever more for the fact that Superman's a horrible father <laughs> and he really takes him to task for that and I love that. I love Justice League Unlimited. It's probably one of my all-time favorite animated anythings and I'm so sad they cancel it. <laughs> but definitely Batman. Firestar or Tiger Star? Firestar? More like... Can I say, can I say the stick? I really like the stick, and a few of you guys are going to get that reference. Uh, I'm making a channel myself and need questions for a Q&A, and I'm a Warrior can fan on Firestar's Quest. Uh, yay! Oh my goodness, so thank you, Abigail. Oh, that's so fun. Oh my gosh. And then let's see what we've got down here. She's drawn several things. So let me go ahead and crack this open, because I'm... Ooh! I see flowers! Oh, moss leaf branch star... Oh my gosh, look at that. Look at that. Beautiful vines and adorable little paw prints on the bottom. I love it. I love it. And then right here we've got our last picture. And then this is her original character. Wow, look at the painting she's done or the drawing. Look at that. Look at that. This is so pretty. So this is Spotted Fern, and then on the back it says, she's made from crow feather and squirrel leaf. Oh, crow feather and squirrel leaf's daughter, Spotted Fern. What a beautiful name. What a beautiful idea. Oh, we're going to have to see how things turn out for our warrior cats. Oh my goodness. It's getting really, really exciting and really hard to write to make sure I keep the tension and the drama and really deal with what all the random generators are throwing at me. So thank you guys so much. This is amazing. I feel fantastic now. I really... I knew I would have such a fantastic loving boost from being able to read your letters and being reminded of just how wonderful it is to share joy with you guys no matter what's going on in my life and it's seriously one of the best lessons haha <laughs> seriously one of the best life lessons I have ever gotten and I'm going to repeat it and repeat it and repeat it until you guys can probably just say it verbatim that cultivating joy and creativity is one of the most important things you can do because of how it will just spread. It'll take root and it'll spread. It'll always give back to you even when everything else is falling apart in your life and your heart is shattered into a million pieces. Cultivating joy does change your life. So enough of rambling that way and then I will see you guys back here for part two of our snail mail when we will finish opening these amazing letters and see what the awesome packages are hiding. So I'll see you guys then. Bye guys. <laughs>